What's going on, everybody? And welcome back to the Hangout Spot, where you already know. It's Real Talk Sports Talk, live from my man cave. It's your boy, Johnny. And let's talk some football, because this week was the final week of the NFL season. Week 18, lots of good games. The playoffs are all set. We're locked and loaded, ready to go. So let's go around the league real quick, highlight some key takeaways, and then we'll talk about the first week of wild card playoff football. But I want to start with a team that I'm most impressed with going into the playoffs, and that's the Houston Texans. They showed me a lot this week in a game where they needed to win to get in. This was a team that came into the season with a rookie head coach, D'Amico Ryans, a rookie offensive coordinator, a rookie quarterback, C.J. Stroud. And not only did they exceed expectations, they're in the playoffs, and they're going to host a playoff game because by virtue of Jacksonville losing and them winning, they win the AFC South. So congratulations and kudos to D'Amico Ryans and all the Houston Texan fans. You guys deserve it. C.J. Stroud is going to be a special player. He is super fun to watch. I used to love watching him when I used to watch him at my Ohio State. And now it looks like his game in college is translated to the NFL. He hasn't skipped a beat. In fact, this game, this was a game, again, that they needed to win to get in. So you figured as a rookie not playing in these type of games, the atmosphere playing on the road would have affected him. He looked like he'd been playing in these type of games for years. And he went up against a tough Colts team at Indianapolis. They ended up winning the game 23-19. It was a great game. But C.J. Strauss started this game with a 75-yard bomb to Nico Collins, an absolute dime, to give the Texans the early lead, and he never looked back. Great game, 20 of 26, 264, two touchdowns. And he saved his best for last on that last drive where they took the go-ahead score. He was perfect. He didn't misfire any pass. I think he was 7 for 7. That's crazy. That's insane. The kid's going to be special. Sherlock for Rookie of the Year. I don't think anybody else can get that. Not with these numbers. 63.9% completion. 4,108 passing yards. And he missed two games. 23 touchdowns against just five interceptions, which is unheard of for a rookie. I believe he led the league in touchdown to turnover ratio as a rookie. Wow. And again, I mean, the Colts, they were a tough out. Give them credit. They have nothing to be ashamed of. Shane Steichen, the offensive coordinator for the Eagles, his first year as coach here, impressive job. Lost Anthony Richardson. Gardner Minshew came in as the backup. And here they were. One win away from getting into the playoffs. So kudos to them. I think the future's bright over there, especially, especially when Richardson comes back. Be interesting to see what happens with Minshew. Does he come back as a uh, backup? I don't think so. I think he's going to try to possibly go somewhere else as a starter, but only time will tell. He's definitely earned that right to, um, to at least compete for a starting job. But the Houston Texans, you know, they're going to be tough. Next week, they're going to face the Cleveland Browns at home. And you got to think that Texans crowd, they're going to be they're going to be revved up. So it would be interesting to see what happens there. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But the Steelers, super impressed with what the Steelers did this weekend. And I know that Lamar Jackson didn't play and some of the starters didn't play. But they went into Baltimore. Hostile crowd. Good defense. Great defense, actually. The weather was horrible. It was rainy. It was cold. And they pull out a 17-10 win. Mason Rudolph was phenomenal. 18 of 20, one touchdown, didn't turn the ball over. A dime of a throw to Deontay Johnson for a touchdown. Najee Harris, second week in a row, rushing over 100 yards, 112 and a touchdown. Give the Steelers credit, man. Four weeks ago, I didn't think they would make the playoffs. Not with Mitch Trubisky at quarterback once Kenny Pickett went out. Mike Tomlin makes the decision to put Mason Rudolph in. They win three games in a row. They get some help, they get in. Kudos to Mike Tomlin. This is a guy that Steeler fans were saying four weeks ago they didn't want back. They were trying to run him out of town. Now, here we are 17 years later, and he hasn't lost. He hasn't had a losing season. That is super impressive. That never happens. He's a Hall of Fame coach. Find a way to keep him there. You guys would be crazy if you run him out of town. Found a way to get it done. Now they're going to the playoffs. They're going to be traveling to face Buffalo next week. Tall task, but anything can happen once you're in there. 
The team that I'm not impressed with is the Jacksonville Jaguars. Oh, my God. They just choked away the division, the AFC South. They were leading that division the majority of the year. All they needed to do was win and beat Tennessee and get in, and they lose 28-20 to in a game where they had the ball at the end. Trevor Lawrence misfired on a wide-open receiver down the field on a bomb, would have had a touchdown, and, and then obviously a two-point conversion try. And then on a fourth down, where he needed to move the chains, he misfired, overthrew Evan Ingram by like two feet. They lose the game. This is a story. The Jaguars are a story of it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Because they started strong. In the middle of the season, I thought this team was a sure lock for the playoffs. Trevor Lawrence was rolling. He was getting better. Then after that high ankle sprain, he wasn't the same. He was inconsistent. He was throwing more picks. In fact, he threw two picks, two costly ones this week. Very disappointing. I think the future is bright for them because I think Trevor Lawrence is going to be a special player. I think Doug Peterson is an amazing coach. Those two are going to make a good combination for years to come. But they blew an opportunity here. They had a chance to make it to the playoffs this year, and they blew it. So there's a lot that they can take from this season. But again, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And they decided to play their worst football at the worst time of the season. It's the way the ball bounces. Buffalo, on the other hand, they started to play better towards the latter part of the season. A lot of people were writing them off early in the season. Then they make a change. They fired Dorsey. They put Joe Brady in as the offensive coordinator, and the offense just took off. They started playing a lot better, more composed. And here we are. They are actually now the AFC East champions. They beat the, Dolph uh, the Dolphins in Miami 21-14. to They needed to win this game to lock up the second seed and win the division. And they did that. They took care of business. Didn't look good in the beginning. I mean, <laughs> the way the game was looking, it looked like Josh Allen was doing whatever, whatever he needed to do to lose that game. He was careless with the football to through two ugly interceptions, but they rebounded. The game turned around. They were losing at the half. The game turned around when that kid, Deontay Hardy, ran that punt return back 96 yards. That just flipped the entire complexity of the game. The momentum shifted. They tied the game at 14. They found a way to win that game. So kudos to the Bills, man. They're going to be a tough out. I said this weeks ago, if they get into the playoffs with their experience, their playoff pedigree, they're going to be a tough out. And I still feel like they're going to be a tough out, especially now with the second seed in the home game coming up. Let's not forget, even though Josh Allen's been careless the last few weeks, over 40 touchdowns combined in the air and on the ground, he's a special player who plays well in playoff games. It's going to be interesting to see. I personally think that the Bills are probably going to make it to the AFC title game. But we'll see. Any, again, anything can happen. Miami, on the other hand, I like their offense. I love Mike McDaniels. I love what they do with all the motions, all the pitches, the sweeps, their fast running backs, Tyreek Hill. Offensive, offensive player of the year candidate, too, has had a solid season. But the last couple of weeks, I'm worried. They get blown out a couple of weeks ago by the, Dolphin, uh, by the uh, Ravens. They lose this game at home with a chance to wrap up the division, the division where they had the lead the majority of the season. I'm concerned. I'm concerned that they started to play – their worst football at the worst time. But we'll see. Now they have to travel. Instead of having a home game, they have to travel to face the Chiefs on Saturday night. It's going to be very, very interesting. On the other hand, in the NFC, the Packers, man, all they needed to do was win to get in and get that last seventh seed, and they did it. They took care of business. Kudos to them. They beat the Bears 17-9. to Jordan Love was solid. 316, two touchdowns. Let's talk about Jordan Love's season, his first full year as a starter. 32 touchdowns, just 11 interceptions. Started off slow, but progressed and got better as the season went on. That's what you want to see from a young quarterback in his first full year as a starter. Looked like he started to trust his coaching, trust his instincts. He spread the ball around. Three good young receivers. Give Matt LaFleur a lot of credit for the development throughout the year. He got better and better. This is what happens. This is what happens when you sit behind Aaron Rodgers for a couple years to get that mental part of the game down pat. That way, when you do finally get your opportunity, the mental part of the game can complement your physical traits, and then you have a productive young quarterback that's going to get better as the years go on. That's the way to develop a quarterback, in my opinion. 
Either way, they're in the playoffs. They have to travel to Dallas. It's not going to be an easy game. The Dallas Cowboys, they win the NFC East by blowing out the Commanders 38-10. to Not surprised that happened. The true story here is this the game that gets the Cowboys offense back on track, the high-flying Cowboy offense. I know the, the Commanders aren't a good team. But again, seven, eight games ago, the Cowboys had a stretch of five games where they were averaging 38 a game. And then they went into a little bit of a low. So could this game propel them going into the playoffs? We'll see. A lot of Cowboy fans want to see the offense that they saw in the regular season in the playoffs. Because usually, Dak Prescott will put up good numbers in the regular season, won't put up so good numbers in the playoffs. Now's the year to prove it because he put up some great numbers this year, some MVP caliber numbers. Not only did he pass for 279 and four touchdowns this game, but for the season, he passed for over 4,500 yards, 36 touchdowns, and nine interceptions. Great season. Now let's see if he can carry it over. C.D. Lamb, 13 catches for 98 yards and two touchdowns. For the season, 135 catches, 1,749 yards, and 12 touchdowns. He is a beast. He's going to be a problem. But now when the games count and they're playing against teams with winning records, are they going to be able to score at this pace? Time will tell. We'll see. They win this division partly because the Eagles just choked it away as well by playing their worst football at the worst time of the year, losing four out of their last five, including this disappointing game against the Giants, 27-10 in a game that was over at the half. I think they were losing 24 to nothing. Sirianni just pulled the starters, waved the white flag. Screw it. We'll just go to the wild card and reset there. I don't know. I don't know about the Eagles. I mean, this is a team that, uh, you know, they started the season 10 and 1. They were finding ways to win. Usually good teams find ways to win. But every week we were saying to ourselves, when is that Eagle team going to show up that made that Super Bowl run last year? Because it's only a matter of time that they start to show up and play a complete game. And here we are at the end of the season and they never showed up. So this is who they are. You're hoping, if you're an Eagle fan, that they're going to turn that switch on next week and become that team in the playoffs when it really matters. They have experience. They have playoff experience. Nick Sirianni has playoff experience. Jalen Hurts. They played in a Super Bowl. So we'll see. But I don't trust that defense at all. I think, and the offense has been very inconsistent. I think a lot of that has to do with losing their offensive coordinator to the Colts. I think that played a big role in it because Jalen Hurts just wasn't the same player. But when they get close to the end zone, the tush push, brotherly shove, whatever you want to call it, it's unstoppable. So that's all realistically what they need to do. Just move the ball and get it close. And they got a chance to score. We'll see. They have to play the Buccaneers next week on the road because they are a wild card team. And the Buccaneers won the division by winning this game. All they needed to do was win to win the division. They took care of business. Barely by beating the Panthers, the lowly Panthers. 9 nothing. But nonetheless, a win is a win. Baker Mayfield took a beating in that game too, man. He looked hobbled at the end of that game doing his interviews. You got to hope that he's going to be okay for next week. He's had a solid season. Last two weeks have been rough. Last two weeks have been rough. But he's had a solid season, a very good season. And he has a beast receiver in Mike Evans. So we'll see what happens. Top bowl defense, again, they're going to be respectable. So it'll be interesting to see what Buccaneer team shows up. By beating the Panthers, they knocked the Saints out. The Saints won, but again, the Saints were knocked out of the playoffs because of that. And that kind of rounded out and decided the teams that were going to be in the playoffs. In other news, Bill Belichick, in perhaps his last game as the Patriots head coach, loses to the New York Jets. Go figure. 17-3. There were a lot of Jet fans that wanted the Jets to win because they wanted to send Bill Belichick off with a loss. Well, you got your wish. Brees Hall was amazing, 178 yards on the ground and a touchdown. But realistically, it was a meaningless game. The story here is Bill Belichick. As of right now, he has not announced that he was leaving, but rumors are 
that he's going to be moving on from New England, possibly retiring. I don't think he'll retire. I think he'll probably wind up somewhere else for a couple of years and then ride off into the sunset, but that's just me. But if he does move on, it'd be interesting to see how the Patriots pivot. Who's going to take over for Bill Belichick? Because those are huge shoes to fill. Possibly the greatest coach in the history of the NFL. They do have the third pick in the draft. They finished 4-13. and 13. So they have the third pick. So you got to think that they're going to take a quarterback. So whoever they bring in is going to have to start the season with a rookie quarterback. There are rumors that Mike Vrabel, who was fired from the Titans, may be linked to this job if Belichick does walk away. So it would be interesting. There are ties there between, uh, between him and the Patriots, being a former player. I personally think if that does happen, I think Josh McDaniels will probably make a comeback to New England as well, possibly be the coordinator for this new quarterback that they draft. I think it makes sense. It's the only place where he's really realistically had success anyway. But it'd be interesting. Like I said, um, this is a new era in Patriot football, something that I'm not used to seeing as a Jet fan. Neither way, I don't care. But it'd just be interesting to see. As far as my Jets, they finished the season 7-10. and 10. They have the 10th pick in the draft. Be interesting to see what they do. Do they take an offensive tackle, which is definitely a position of need? Do they take a wide receiver? Do they trade back, recoup picks? There's a lot of holes on this team, so it'll be interesting to see what they do. And we're going to be talking about that in the coming weeks. Black Monday struck, struck hard. As usual, Arthur Smith out as the head coach for the Falcons. Ron Rivera, as expected, fired as the head coach um, of the Washington Commanders. Vrabel, we just mentioned, besides some of the coaches that were fired mid-season, there's going to be a few job openings. Wink Martindale, defensive coordinator for the Giants, he decides that he wants to walk away. So it'd be interesting to see if he interviews for a head coaching job. If not, he will definitely be a defensive coordinator somewhere else. He's one of our better defensive coordinators in the league. So uh, Brian Dable is going to have to find himself the defensive coordinator over there in New York. But that was our week, man. It was interesting. And now it's off to the playoffs. And it's going to be a really good week of wild card football. It starts with the Browns and the Texans. Saturday at 4.30. The Browns are a two and a half point favorite. Don't know how I feel about this game, to be honest with you, because I like both teams. I love both their stories. Kevin Stefanski has done a fantastic job with the Browns, facing all that adversity, all those injuries to the offensive line, losing his running back. Nick Chubb early in the year. Five quarterbacks they've started this year. Joe Flacco being the most successful. They pulled him out of retirement. He'll be starting on Sunday. He has playoff experience. He, feel, he looks very comfortable in that offense. Looks happy and re-energized. I love what Stefanski has done with this team. I do. He'd be Mike Pick for Coach of the Year if I had a vote. But it'd be close. It'd be between him and D'Amico Ryans because I also love what they're doing. Rookie head coach. I love C.J. Stroud. He's a former Buckeye. I support my Buckeyes regardless of what teams they play for. He's going to be a special player. So it's going to be interesting. I don't know. I don't know about this one. I know the Houston Texan crowd is going to be pumped up. They're going to be revved up. This will be one of those games that, because I like them both, I'll flip a coin. But if I had to flip it now, I'll go with the Texans at home. Saturday, 8 o'clock game. The Dolphins, 11-6, are going to be traveling to Kansas City to face the 11-6 Chiefs. Right now, the Chiefs are a four-point favorite. Like I said before, I don't like the way the Dolphins are playing, especially the last two games, but I do like Mike McDaniels. He's very creative. The way he moves this offense, I love Tyreek Hill. There's a ton of weapons there. But I'm worried. I'm worried that they got cold at the wrong time. And it's not like... I'm excited about the way Kansas City has been playing either, but we are talking about the Chiefs, former Super Bowl champions, defending Super Bowl champions. Lots of playoff experience. Patrick Mahomes, in my opinion, the best quarterback in football. Andy Reid, Travis Kelsey, who's a big-time, big-game receiver. I know they've had issues with the offense, dropping passes, but something tells me that now that it's the playoffs, the real games, I think something's going to switch for them. At least in this game. I like the Chiefs to win this game. At home. And we'll see what happens next week. But 
The Sunday games will be really good. You got the Steelers, 10 and 7, going to Buffalo to face the Bills, 11 and 6. Right now, Buffalo's a 10 point favorite. Buffalo's going to be scary, like I said earlier. I like what the Steelers did. I like this story. I like Mike Tomlin. But going into Buffalo to win this game, I don't know. Don't feel comfortable that's going to happen. They may keep it close. I mean, it's a high spread, double digit, but I think the Bills win this game fairly easy in the advance. Then you got the Packers, 9 and 8, who are going to Dallas to face the Cowboys, 12 and 5, 4 30 game. Cowboys are a 7.5 point favorite. Jordan Love's first playoff game. Be interesting to see how that plays out. But the Cowboys are really good at home. I think they only lost one game at home this year, if I'm not mistaken. I think at least for one week, the offense that they showed in the regular season is going to translate into the offense that they show in this first postseason game. I find it hard to believe that anybody on the Packers secondary is going to stop CeeDee Lamb. So I'm going to pick the Cowboys to win this game, which takes us to our 8 o'clock game on Sunday. It's going to be a good one, an interesting one. A game that pits two quarterbacks that are playing against their former teams. You have the 10-7 and LA Rams who are traveling to Detroit to face the 12-5 and Detroit Lions. Right now the Lions are a three-point favorite. The story here is Matthew Stafford's coming back to Detroit where he played all those years. And then you have Jared Goff who played for the Rams who's going to be playing against them. You know, he did play with the Rams when they made the Super Bowl that year and lost. And even though Matthew Stafford didn't have any success with the Lions, he did go to the Rams and ended up winning a Super Bowl with them. So it's going to be interesting to see how either about both of these quarterbacks play against their former teams. I love Dan Campbell and what this team is all about. They're tough. They're gritty. If they can run the football and work off play action, they're going to be hard to beat, especially at home. I think the Detroit crowd is going to be absolutely berserk. But there's a big loss. I mean, they lost Sam Laporta last week to an injury. They're tight end. So it may be... There may be a little bit of a struggle there trying to get the ball to some of their other tight ends. I don't know. The Rams can score the rock, though. They have a lot of weapons. Stafford has had a solid season. I love Sean McVay. I think he's the best play caller besides Mike McDaniel in the league. And they do have weapons. I mean, Kyron Williams, dual threat. Puka Nakua, a stud this year. And they have Cooper Cup, who have played in playoff games and have won a Super Bowl. This one is tough. Because the Lions are tough at home. But for some strange reason, I think Matthew Stafford is going to come back. And he's going to play in front of his old Detroit crowd. He's going to play lights out. I think the Rams win this game. Again, I'm not sure about this one. But I'm going to pick the Rams to win this game in an upset. Which takes us to our last game on Monday night between the 11-6 Philadelphia Eagles. And the 9-8 and Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Buccaneers... Or, I'm sorry, the Eagles are coming in as a three-point favorite. This is probably the softest landing spot for the Eagles, to be honest with you. Um, although the Buccaneers won the division, I think the Eagles, regardless of how they play down the stretch, have the better team. Baker's had a good season, and I know the defense, you know, a top bowl's defense is going to be formidable. I don't see how the Eagles' secondary is going to stop Mike Evans if they're able to find him the football, but I do think that the Eagles are going to be able to do enough. Let's not forget... You know, this is the playoffs now, and they've been in the playoffs, and they've played in big games. Jalen Hurts has a ton of playoff experience already in his young career. If they get close to the goal line, the tush-push or brotherly shove is unstoppable to, 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 to stop. I mean, you, can't, you just can't stop it. I expect them to do that at least twice this game, and they'll find a way to beat the Buccaneers in advance, and then we'll kind of see what happens next week. But those are my predictions for the playoffs. I think it's going to be a phenomenal first week. I'm looking forward to it. If you're a fan that roots for any of these teams, man, enjoy it. Enjoy the ride for as long as it lasts. Trust me what I'm saying. Don't take it for granted. I'm jealous. I wish I had a team that I can root for in the playoffs. My team hasn't been to the playoffs in 13 years. So, again, never take it for granted. Go out there. Cheer hard. Enjoy the games. I think it's going to be really interesting to see what teams show up. And I think this first week has a tendency to kind of shape out how we believe the rest of the playoffs is going to be. So, I can't wait to see what happens going forward. We're going to be doing some more videos, obviously, as the weeks progress to talk about future playoff games. So make sure you tune in for that. And as always, drop a you know drop a comment. You know I love to hear everybody's feedback. If you're new to watching my videos, please subscribe and come back and join your boy. Hang out with me here more often at the Hangout Spot. We're going to be doing a lot of cool stuff 
in the year 2024. So make sure you stay along for the ride. But as always, enjoy this week of football. We'll be doing some more videos later this week. So tune in for those. This is your boy Johnny signing off from the Hangout Spot, and I will talk to everybody soon.